and welcome to Merrowind. So today's video I am going to explain everything about getting started in this game, uh, picking your skills, leveling up, finding um, uh, basically everything uh, that you need to do to start your game. Um, there's just so much in this thing. Let's get started on that quick save right there. You're going to find out how to travel around, how to level up your merchantile skill to full and I should have saved, I didn't save it, then we're supposed to be saving it. So let's just ignore this first part here and go to where we're supposed to be going. I thought I saved it, but yeah, right here is the starting town. Uh, we're going to uh, find the Golden Saint spell. We're going to find Golden Saint scrolls. We're going to level up Merchantile to max. We are going to abuse all the mechanic systems and how to uh, find Golden, uh, not Golden Souls, uh, Grand Soul Gems and fill them with the best. Uh, easiest golds and saint spells to create your magic items level enchanting 200 how to level up all of the skills to maximum and level up all your attributes to maximum too we are going to cover this this is going to be a full starting guide on all the tips and checks that you need to get started and maximize your character before you even start bothering to play the actual game and enjoy the game's quest and stuff like that uh, so let's get started you start off right here if you're not familiar with Merwind or you haven't played it in like 20 years like I haven't uh, and you come back in here and this is where you start you get off the boat you come into here and we are going to finalize our character creation so I haven't done very much I'm going to go through the basic starter quest in this little zone right here and then cover the uh, uh, the rest of it when you get to Belmora. Belmora is the first major town you're going to come to and get to easily and that was the stilts right there you can get to them that way so this guy here you come up to your character creation and let's finish it off here I have extra large uh, uh, windows here so you can see it a little bit better but when you pick your character you're going to have options to pick you're going to pick your own class and stuff like that and stuff like this so the best uh, thing you're going to pick is well first of all you have to remember how to level up in this game so let's cover that first because that's important to when you're picking your class that's the most important thing to remember first so leveling up in this game requires you to level up 10 skills major and minor skills combined just any 10 levels and now once you get 10 levels as you can see here i am 6 out of 10 so so once you get 10 levels you level up when you level up a little menu pops up showing all your attribute points right here and you have three little coins so the three coins and then you pick which attributes you want to level up and as you can see I'm already up to almost 100 and everything except for luck and all of these skills that you have for major and minor skills and all the rest of the skills have an attribute that govern them so that's why it says governing attribute like agility for that one and agility for that one and personality for a speech craft what that means is for all your level ups that you get you get a mod modifier to your coins when you level them up so for the first level up you'll get a times two multiplier pretty handy but you have to wait until five level ups in an in agility to get a times three and then eight for a times four and then the maximum is a times five at ten skill ups which means you want to skill up at least you know uh, 20 times for your skills to get two times five multipliers and then you have your third level up to go into luck. So when you have to the three coins, luck has no extra attribute. So you're going to want to put one coin into luck every level up if you want to max that out. And as you know, as you can see, it's pretty easy to get leveled up. I still have a lot of levels I can go. I have more, lots of these skills here all over the place. And I can still level up more and I'll be done like in three more levels. And I have way more than three levels to go. I'm not finished with that. But that's enough for me, basically, to level up. I'm already too powerful as it is. And I haven't done anything besides this basic stuff so um next thing you're going to know so now that you know how the level up works and you need these governing skills it, it doesn't matter how much which ones you pick i could i could do five in light armor and five in a block to get agility up by 10 levels to level up and minor and then miscellaneous skills you can level these up as much as you want and not get gain a level but you get the multiplier so if I leveled up Illusion by 10 points, I'd get a times 5 multiplier for my intellect. So my intellect would go up by 5 per level up. Uh, maximum is 100, so I don't get any more of that. But that's how you do your, your stuff. You want to try and level up one major skill at a time uh, to get your level up. And you get your times 5 multiplier. And then level up some other miscellaneous skill that that's a different skill to get a different times 5 and another attribute. So you get 2 times 5s and a plus 1. So that's how you maximize your levels. And uh, don't pick the skills that I have right here, uh, except for maybe the speechcraft but we'll get into that in a second because the next thing you're going to want to do is first thing you want to do is pick your class is what they make you pick so the out of all the classes there i think breton is the best it has it offers uh, extra intellect and there's no ex other uh, way to gain gain magic 
uh, maximum magic points in this game, uh, other than your intellect and willpower, or just your intellect or whatever, and, and magic items. There's the only way to do it is actually the uh, best way to do it is actually off of your class. So the Bretons are giving you a 50% a modifier from your int to your magic bonus. So you get, you know, that 50% bonus to your magic, maximum magic. And then of course that's the sign for the other one for the two for the times two for your intellect. That's what Bretons offer you. And they also offer you the nice cool skill of 50% magic resistance. So magic resistance is really kind of important. That means half the, half the spells basically you cast on you or just aren't going to work. And that is really handy. It will help you make you, you know, incredibly powerful. And the next uh, thing you're going to be picking in your character is going to be your uh, favorite attributes. So you get to pick two attributes that are going to give you a plus 10 in each of them. Well, obviously, if you've been paying attention so far, luck. Luck, you only get one per level up. So getting 10 at the start of the game is going to save you 10 levels later on to get your luck up higher. So luck, you can't level up by times five. You can only do it one at a time. So luck should be your first one that you're gonna pick. And on the second one you offer uh, plus 10, I recommend you getting personality. Now personality is the first thing you're gonna be using to uh, gain all your gold. So you wanna get as much gold as possible and make it all as free as possible. And you can really bug this game out. Well, that's the way the game is made. made. You can buy stuff for cheaper than then you can sell it for so you can go to the merchant and buy something for 100 gold and then you can sell it back to him for like 150 that's the way it's going to work out for you and having the higher speech craft at the start of the game is going to help you do that because your reputation against those th things matter and since that matters and helps you with your personality increasing their your reputation or how much they like you uh with them and that helps really really helps your your how much money you're going to get off of them so you want that up high, nice and high. And so next, what's the next thing you're gonna pick? The next thing you're gonna pick on your on your class is your specialized, um, your, your specialization. So there's three options. There's gonna be, a, there's gonna be a magic, there's gonna be a combat, and then there's gonna be, you know, the sneaky uh, security stuff, the stealth one. So those, those three options right there. So if you pick, if you pick Breton, you're going to have bonuses to your some of your magic skills. And these bonuses represent like a plus 5 or a plus 10 to these certain skills. And since we've already said that these skills uh, determine your level ups, uh, that makes sense to have these skills as low as possible. And since you're getting a bonus to magic skills already, take your bonus, your bonus points of plus 5 to all your skills in magic. And then don't pick major and, ma and minor skills as magic because you want these to start off as low as possible. The lower they're at, the more levels you're going to get. Which means, you know, the bigger the handicap, the more the bonus at the end of the game, you're going to have more levels. So you want your no bonuses on all your mi major and minor skills. You want them flat. Uh, minor skills give you a bonus of plus 10 to your skills. So the lowest that these guys are going to start at is 15. And major skills give you a bonus of 25 points. So the lowest that the major skills are going to start at is level 30. Now that you got that cleared up and understanding, uh, the next thing you're going to pick on your character is going to be your sign. Now the best sign I found is this one here, the Atronach. I'm probably not saying that right, but yeah, I find this sign to be the most powerful sign that there is. Um, it has an, a, a bad effect of making it so you don't regenerate magic. And in this game here, you don't regenerate magic at all unless you're sleeping. Uh, and that is it. You have to sleep or you have to, you know, use potions and, and, and scrolls and, and stuff like that to actually gain magic back. Or, you know, but since you're also the Atronach thing, the best thing about that one there, it also gives you times two to your intellect. That's right there. So times two to your intellect for your maximum magic. So you're going to have way higher ma maximum magic. But the other bonus is the spell absorption. 50 points. That's 50% spell absorption, which as you can tell, like half the spells that come there and they hit you, you're going to absorb the magic points. And then the other half that do hit you, you have 50% 50, 50 chance to actually just you know negate those spells altogether so right at the start uh, these spells are going to have like 75 percent chance to actually hurt you uh if my math is correct it might not be but yeah but that is it uh and now then now we get onto the skills training section right here on which skills you want to pick for major and minor skills and what i recommend you to take so major skills is pretty much a set on what you should be taking uh, for one of the skills at least as speechcraft 
Now, Speechcraft is the one I'm talking about. I was talking about for leveling up merchantile and leveling up your reputation and makes things a lot easier for you to have higher Speechcraft at the start of the game. It's, it's one of the things that have the, the most effect at the start of the game, and that's what you want. So that's why I like to do the mage thing right there with the mage skills, and then my Speechcraft will start at 30, uh, and that will be, uh, you know, I'll just, you know, help you out a lot. So Speechcraft at 30 is one of your major skills. The next thing you should take for your major skill is Athletics. I didn't take it. Athletics turns out to be a real pain in a and then the butt to level up if you're going to do it manually. You got to like swim around, uh, like an auto swim against a pole basically or somewhere else. Auto swim to level it up is the fastest way other than training and we're just going to train to get up there. But starting off with 30 speed is going to help you run around a lot faster since you start off incredibly, incredibly slow in this game. Running is very slow and you're going to want to have that as high as possible to start with. The next good things to have is sneak and security at 32 because those things are kind of hard or a pain to level up. Security is kind of a pain to level up because you got to find doors and stuff to unlock and then relock so and, and sneak can be easy to do it but it's also tricky to do it uh, because of just the way it works you have to be within a certain range of the guy to get to work and then you have to wait a long time so training is the key to leveling up these skills the best but these things are good to have at the start right there so that leaves one more skill point to pick at the start and I would recommend taking long blade as another major skill or just any weapon that you want except for spear and just so you take those and have those as your major skill so you have a weapon that might actually be able to hurt something because at the start of the game you're not going to be able to hit anything with like a 15 in your skill it just doesn't work uh, that way so having 30 in long blade will help you maybe hit something you don't need light and block in here you can save that for minor skills now minor skills now that we get to major skills last chance on major skills speechcraft uh, athletics uh, sneak security and long blade or whichever weapon you prefer besides spear as your first five for your major skills they should all say 30 and you'll be good to go uh, minor skills you're going to want to have um you should, you should probably have uh, you know short blade for, for for sure take short blade as one of your minor skills for sure because that one's easiest to level up uh because of the trainer it's in belmora the next thing you might want to take is um your where is it merchantile put merchantile in as a minor skill because it is uh It'll help you out with the start there. The extra 10 points will help you uh, game the system and start making money off guys instead of just, you know, breaking even or losing money when you're leveling it up. Um, so that will help you out there. And also you'll gain level ups uh, with it. But you do need a secondary skill that will level up fast that you can do easily without training because you might not have the money. But you... You probably should have the money right away because if you're doing this. Uh, but yeah, that next easiest one is acrobatics. Acrobatics is super easy to level. It is just jumping. Just find a low roof or a side of a cliff and then just hit spam the jump button and you'll level up acrobatics. It is super easy to do. I just haven't gotten around to it because they didn't need to. But yeah, but it's a good one to have at the start there to level up for your for your minor skills and, or if you don't even want to you don't have to put merchantile if you want to have it a little bit more difficult at the, at the start there leave your merchantile as a, a miscellaneous skill so you can level that up and get your times five in either or the either or of those things everything else for for minor skills you, do, you don't really care like i said you can take light armor and block if you want those are usually pretty good because you know you can let people hit just whack on you and hit you to level those up uh, nice and easily so that might help you out uh, spear might be good to pick. Uh, don't overdo the things with endurance and uh, per and um, what's it called again? Uh, personality. Endurance and personality only have three skills that will, will level them up. So you don't want to get screwed over later on in the game by having them all as major and minor skills. So don't pick like illusion. Well, that's magic anyways. But but don't pick both me uh, heavy and medium armor for endurance and spear as a minor skills because in the end you are forced to level them up. Uh, level those up to get your endurance up to, to maximum level so you, you don't want you don't want to be forced into having a level up situation now last thing about level ups level ups you can stack them up as much as you want you can have uh like 5 10 20 levels stacked up but the multipliers go away as soon as you rest so your first rest will level you up one time you get those multipliers after that those multipliers are gone and you have to level up different skills again. So that makes it optimal to actually just level up one at a time and use those skills to level up uh, uh, as you needed. But once they are maxed out, like uh, for example, my Speechcraft, I leveled up Merchantile first to get my personality up. And once that was up at 100, I still had four more levels to go on my Speechcraft. So I just spammed a guy with Admire until my Speechcraft was up to 100. And so I, I didn't naturally without, without using the cheat mode, but that's what I did just to see if I just to see if I could. And I got four more levels, which didn't do nothing because my personality was already at 100. 
So you level up minor skills or even a major skill to get to the next level. It doesn't matter because they stack. So you could level up a major skill or or minor skills as long as you have that two plus five modifier that it will show you on there. So that is it for this for getting your character uh, picked for your minor and major skills. It doesn't really matter. Just don't pick anything ma uh, for magic for minor skills like I did. I'm going to be short one level because I got I picked destruction and enchant and I picked magic as a thing. So I got plus five to both of those. So I'm going to be short one level on my maximum level on this character and then uh, that's about it so now you know how all this works you picked your character you got your sign your character started you are ready to go so this next part right here is going to be a short stint on the first starting area of these quests and how to get them done real quickly and what, what, what they all mean basically so you talk to this guy you get your quest you're ready to go you come over here there's all these items in here like a knife and a, and a lock pick to pick the lock they basically say loot everything so they teach you to loot everything so just loot everything and down over here in this room here is your free bed you can use this to sleep whenever you want and of course you can loot all the items in here and everything so just loot everything down here take everything here get your starting gold ready to go come over here is the next option right here in this barrel there's going to be a magic ring that has heal on it so you can have a with charges of heal charges of magic in this game recharge will recharge automatically uh, over time but they are really slow at doing so. I don't know what it is. I should have tried to test it because I didn't really care, but it might be like one charge an hour type deal. Uh, I don't know. But after you're done talking to this bloke here for no reason, you come out here and the first guy you talk to, he'll be positioned right where this guard is basically. You come out there and be right in front of you. I think that's him over there. He talk, you talk to him and he has a little option of a ring and you give him the ring back. So yeah, you all that magic item ring, just give it away to him. And why you do that is because you're gonna get the ring back anyways. You give him the ring and then you go to, and he says, oh, thank you, I'm gonna tell my friend. His friend is the merchant in here. And then merchant in here will give you this dude right here. He will give you a bonus to his uh, reputation right here for your persuasion type deals. He will give you the bonus to that, and which will make it easier to start your trading little uh, Merchantile skill up type deal if you want to do it here um, Which will be recommended because he's gonna have the high he's gonna have the bonus You don't know you're gonna start off with like 60 or something like that for personality But he's gonna come up there with like 85 or 90 if you take personality up right away He's gonna have that so that's gonna make your uh, it easier and you might be able to admire him because admiring is going to be difficult but if you have that extra personality it might work but that's what save and reload is for f5 save it and f9 to reload now you come to this guy right here so you talk to this flat-footed dude right here and you ask him about uh, that guy's hiding place so you ask him about his hiding place and he says go find his hiding place so that's what we're going to do right now his hiding place if you come out the, out of the uh, door here move out of my way woman but anyway, you come out here, and here is his hiding place right inside here. But of course, you cannot access it right away. Uh, you can access it right away, but you can't get anything out of it right away because he doesn't hasn't dropped anything off yet. You have to queue him up. He's still, still standing over here. He'll have his torch. You have to wait until nighttime. So you can sit around there and do your merchantile leveling up. I'll show you that in a second. But you got to come over here. Come over here, and there's one little hidden thing right here in the stump. So you come to the, this tower here. In this stump right here, there is a uh, nice chalice and 25 gold sitting right down there. You can just pick it up and uh, go nuts. You come in here. This is a quest person too for the quest I'm going to tell you about later on. But you come up here on top of the tower here. Um, it, the quest might trigger in another place. There is a skill book up here. It's worth 300. You can pick them all up. You'll get a skill up in something. And you can just pick up all the junk up here for free. And that's what I did to get some extra starter cash. And you come up on top of here. And then you just sit there and tap sneak or something like that and just wait uh, it has to be nighttime of course so at nighttime you'll see him walking around with the torch he will walk over to here and then back over to there and he'll walk to that stump and then he'll sit there for a second then he will take off after he's moved away from that stump you're free to move and you're far enough away and you've watched where his hiding spot is you're free to move go away and get it so you come over here and in this stash he has 300 gold now and he has the magic ring so you put the magic ring back 300 gold and some other junk item is in there and you take it all and you're good to go and now you have that so now you can take it and uh go back up to the guy and return that quest if you want to and that guy will give you a rep with the uh, stilts rider i believe or some rep with some other guys but that is that first quest the next first quest is there's somebody is missing you have to go find him. He is just over here. So that, that flying guy won't be here because that is what happens in this game when you level up. When you level up in this game, guys get harder. Which means uh, this is one of the first role-playing games that made leveling up kind of useless. 
you level up, the uh, enemies level up. What's the point of leveling? Exactly. Uh, that's what I mean. Uh, they kind of did that, and it's a flying clipper. These guys are pretty easy, so they're not, they're not going to be too hard, but these guys won't be here, and they'll be hard to kill at the start of the game. But this guy is right across here, so you can just come right across here, and up here, I'll leave the weapon out. And those guys won't be here either, but they don't fight you. You'll come over here, this guy will be here, but they're, they're going to be weak for you. Easy to kill, and leeches too. And this is the body. So right here is the body of this guy here. You're going to find him, you're going to loot him. He is going to have some gold on, 200 gold, because I remember that. And he's going to have some other stuff on there, which you can take. And it's good for you. Now that you have that, you get uh, what you're going to do if you're going to be responsible is go back to the starting guy and tell him because you know uh, maybe somebody else in town will tell you, hey, go go tell the uh, the the leader of this town that that uh, the guy's dead. You know he's the tax collector. So you come into here, you go around now. I'm going to go this way because it's faster. But you come in here, you talk to this guy again, and then he'll he says, oh, you found him. Okay, cool. Uh, and then he had money on him, and then you have to give the money back. So you have to give the 200 gold back. But he gives you a quest to find the killer. So like most things in this game is, if you give away your money, you're going to get it back. You give away the magic item, you're going to get it back. Um, it might not be true for everything, but it seems to be the way they wanted to do it. That you will get extra rewards for, for doing it. But not all the time, like example right there. But you talk to people around town, you talk to her in there. And she's the next guy for the last clue, I think. Or the best clue for this quest. Is you talk to her and she said, yeah, that's my friend. Find her. He's got, she's got a magic ring. You know, she has the magic ring on him, so you got to find him and get the magic ring off of him. Well, not a magic ring, just a regular ring. Uh, but it's, you know, it's an exquisite ring, and that's worth 240. And that's the best ones you can get for enchanting. Uh, but you come in here, and well, let's go to the shack, though. So you come in the shack, so this, you'll be your first time playing it, or you forget. This guy's shack right here. Uh, Gilnish, uh, Foreign, Gilnish, Gilnith. Foreign, foreign Gilneth. Ah, I'm so bad with names. But yeah, in here, he'll be right here. He'll be looking at you right here. You talk to him, and he says, Yeah, I killed him. I didn't like that guy. He's a freaking tax collector. Screw him, I'm poor. And then you got you kind of sympathize with him. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, but there was no proof that he actually was skimming uh, off the top. And you shouldn't really kill the guy. You you know, you shouldn't really kill the guy for it. Um, that's a little bit extreme. So you can turn him in or let him go. And you got to kill him, of course, to get the other crest reward. So you kill him. He fights you with fists. He might be hard at the start. But you get access to all of his stuff in here, too, that you can loot. And he'll have, like, junk in here. And, you know, regular junk. This is a skill book, too. 150. That's probably the best thing in here. But now that you're, he's dead, that you can loot everything that you want in here. So you get some more starter gold. And then you go back to the guy over there. You get the quest. To finish it and get 500 more gold and you can bring the ring back to her for no reason so you can give her the ring and I didn't see any bonus bonus for giving that ring back and it's you know it's worth 240 so you might as well just keep that ring for now uh, unless you want to be nice and give her the ring back which is you know not but let's cover the next part right here the merchantile stuff so uh, bear with me on this one here this is how you level up your merchantile really easily on your own without the skills and gain money. If you want to do it this way. Or you can find, if you have enough money, you think you can just level up with skills, but you probably can't at the start. You need you need to cover the basics on leveling up. So what you do is, when once you click on the, the barter skill here, uh, and excuse these bigger things right here, uh, find an item. The way this merchantile stuff works is... Um, the the uh, bigger the percentage of your discount and your bonus for gold for selling it is the bigger that percentage is the more experience you're going to get in your merchantile skill so um that's why i mean that so try and pick an item that has the least amount of value that you can get away with on selling it for less gold than what he says it is so this gold he says this is worth 18 you want to be able to sell it for 17 i mean buy it for 17 so you want to buy this for one less gold than what he has and at the start of the game this is probably the best option to take is that candle that you can find over there that's probably your best option to start with at something that's worth 25 for, for value that so that thing started at 25 it went down to 18 for his selling i'm a max too right i'm at 100 100 and that's what it goes down to and then you want to do it down down by one point and you want to buy it for one less and then once you buy it you can just hit e or whatever your command is to go to buy it again and then th th your menus will be smaller i have mine times two for to help you see everything better but there's your candlestick again you click on it and now you want to sell it for since mine's max it's 18 again 
again, but I want to sell it for 19, let's say, and that will represent a gain. And so I sell it and then I gain experience in my merchantile skill and I made money. So at the start of the game, uh, you're going to be a lot lower and this option right here, it says it's worth 25. It might not sell for 18. I think it might sell for like 22 or something at the start. Uh, I, 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 I don't remember for sure. But anyways, at the higher cost like this, you want to go down, down by one and up by one still. And if and if it fails the first time, try again and try again. If it fails like more than three times, then just quit and then and then pick something that's worth more like you know pick a different pick the book like worth 40 that you can find so you can use the book for that's worth 40 and then now uh, use that instead uh, let's go back over here but i don't think you'll have to do that i really don't where is that oh yeah things are up there so you, you could pick the book that's worth 40. so this was says 33 and then, then pick one so what i mean by percentages is you don't really want to pick this item here that's worth a whole bunch of gold like 3,000 type gold and then lower it by one and even lower it by some. It's going to take you too much work and it does go by percentages. So the, the lower the uh, item and value you can do this with and get away with, the better it is for you to get merchantile skill. So later on, you're going to want to try and get like, you know, this fork that's worth six, six gold. Did I just pick it and you just said nothing? Is that free? Or am I selling something? Okay, let's, let's get out of here because I want to actually see a value on there. You don't want to give it to me for free. What did I pick there? Okay, pick the fork. Yeah, he's worth four gold. So if I go down to three, that's a, that's a nice 25% discount. That'll put my skill up a lot if I can get the offer to work. And of course it will right now. So, and then you can buy it for, and then yeah, I can sell it for, you know, more. That is an example of how to do it. If your skill is good enough and you can do that, you'll get more you'll get more experience on your merchantile skill. So it's just back and forth. And even if you're losing money off this uh, candle at the start, even if you're losing money and this, you're, you, even if you're getting a discount of one and then you're buying it back for one and you're still losing four gold, a, uh, a transaction, you will eventually get your merchantile up 10 points and then all of a sudden you'll be, just be losing two gold a transaction. And then you get it up another 10 points and then you're going to be breaking even. You get it up another 10 points, you're going to be making two gold in transaction. And then, and so on and so on. So right now I can probably, how much was this, 18? So I can probably buy this for 10. There, uh, see I bought it for 10. And if you refused a couple times, I bought it for 10. And he said 18. So that's what the skill represents right there. And this says uh, right now I can sell it for 18. I just sold it for 10. So that means I can probably sell it back to him for 28. There you go. And I just made 20 gold off of that. So that is how you make gold. You can make as much gold as you want. Level up your skills. It's at the same time you level up your skills. Get your merchantile up 10 points. Come down underneath here. If you didn't pick that. And this is a good place right here. I am jumping. I am leveling up my skill right now. So you can't see nothing. But I'm smashing my spacebar button to jump and that's leveling up my acrobatics skill where is that acrobatics that's the easy way to level up acrobatics if you don't want to waste money i got 13 points into it and i just had it leveled up earlier on so it that's how high it got just right away so it's really fast and uh that is it for the basic quest in this area there is a little cave over here it's on the way to the silt rider there's a cave over there there's like two guys to kill in there and minor loot and stuff. Well, it's major loot right now since I'm on my lock. But the next cool thing about this place is come down this pathway here. It should be wide open for you. So just come down this pathway here. You can come down here first if you wanted to and before you went over there. But you come down this pathway. Follow it for the next, for the coolest part of the game. Okay, the coolest part of the game is right up here. That guy won't be there. He's passive. Don't worry. Uh, right here. So once you get over to here, you're going to hear a nice bass scream. Oh, my goodness. Ah, then you're going to hear a splat. You'll see a book on the ground right away. Uh, but then you, he'll, he'll fall down and splat right here. This is where he lands. The guy had a nice jump spell. Here it is. Right here. Jump. Fortify jump. 1,000 points in the fortify acrobatics. That's your jumping. He had that spell right there. His diary says, yeah, I got a cool little spell to travel around. Screw everybody else. This is the best spell in the game. And he forgot to put slow fall on his spell. And he fell down and died. And you get three, three of those scrolls. They're worth 100 uh, each or so. And he has loot on them too that you can loot. And that is another way to get some free loot and see a nice little neat little thing right there and get those unique scrolls at the start of the game. So now let's carry on. The next thing you're going to want to do is actually level up your skills with actual better trainers. There's some trainers in here uh, that you can train off of, like even the starting guy is a trainer. But they all cost money and you want to find better merchants and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to go over here to the stilts rider. And there's that cave right there I told you about. Pretty easy. You can free some slaves. 
uh, if you have enough skills, but you can ignore it for now. And you talk to this guy here, and now we travel. Now, you can travel through... Traveling in this game has lots of different options. You got the Stealth Rider, you got Boats, you got Mark and Recall spell, you got Divine Intervention spells, and another Divine spell. You got a Portal System and Mage's Guild Traveling. Uh, there's just so many, um, I can't get in them all. So you're going to want to go here and travel to Belmora. This is, a, this is the first place you need to go for your quest. For your main quest, you come into here, and here is the town. So this town is really easy to navigate. It's still pretty big, especially when you're going really slow at the start of the game. It's still pretty big. This here is the merchant's quarter. You got some houses over there, and you got two more big vendors over there. Excuse me, that's the alchemist and the tailor. They have lots of gold on them, and gold is what you want to find and get. And all of these places that have flags on them are, are businesses or th things to go with merchants that will help you out, and trainers and stuff like that. Those are the easy recognizable places. The quest guy is way over here, and across the bridge right here is the Thieves Guild. Thieves Guild is easy to recognize. We don't need to go and join it up right away. It's got some trainers in there. Uh, but right here is the South corner club and that's where you got to go for your first quest to talk to the guy in there you can go in there and talk to him and he gives you directions to the guy's house but that has his house is just right here just right in the corner that's the, this is the first guy's house he you give him the package that you receive he says you can use my bed you can't use anything else I, you touch anything else in this game you're stealing it even after you become like you know as high as you can in rank in the blades even after that you still can't use anything in, in here and he's gone he gives you the house doesn't work they kind of goofed up on that, but yeah, you talk to him, and then he gives you access to all the other Blaze Trainers. And unlike the other classes, Blaze Trainers you can just train off of right away, and you can check these houses. So you check the houses, and if there's a lock on them, there's not really going to be a Blaze Trainer inside. The Blaze Trainers won't have a lock on their house. If they don't have a lock on their house, they're going to be somebody you can talk to and might be a trainer. That guy's not the, a Blaze trainer guy, but there's lots of other little trainers just around in these little houses here that you can check. And then some of them are better than the actual guild trainers. Like there's a mage guy, there's a guy in there can trade better, train you in mage skills better than everybody in the mage guild. Except for maybe the guy that you need rep with to get. But yeah, and same with these houses. These are basic houses here. Who cares about those houses, right? Come into here, there's businesses and tra trainers in here, and this place too, but come up to, use the staircase to come up here. This is the guy right here who trains short blade. So this is the short blade trainer of 100. She has 100 in her skill, so you can train your short blade up to 100 as long as you have 100 speed, because eh, it's limited by your speed. So if you got 50 speed, you can only trade your short blade up to 50, but as your speed goes up, your short blade can go up too. And she can train to the max, and she's pretty good at sneaking acrobatics too. So there is the trainer right there, who can train you up to a hundred in your first town. So right away you can find a trainer, and then there's other trainers and guys in here, blah blah blah. And in this town here, these are all merchant areas. Merchant, merchant, uh, pawnbroker, merchant, merchant over here. Uh, there's the mage guild merchants. Uh, two of them, what? Two of them are noteworthy. There's only one guy that's can sell stuff in here but he's got 2k uh bookseller's kind of pain i use scrolls to sell him a maximum because he's got 750. uh right here is the first inn you can use if you want to and that will be the next tip i'm going to show you in a second uh, as soon as i go up here and explore the rest of the towns for the things you need to know here is the houses there are three houses in this game for uh family houses that you can join and you can only join one of them. Uh, I don't recommend you join this guy, these guys. So you can join any of the houses, but you can come in here and use their trainers. And they got some vendors in there too. Um, the best trainer that they have is on the bottom floor. Is this chick right here? This old lady. Uh, she has good training skills because she has a uh, security and light armor for you if you're doing that. And she has pretty high skills in them. And she's pretty good in short blade right now for some reason. But anyways, she's good. And she has barter. And her barter skills are she has the master lockpicks and master probe. And of course, um, she has so many of them. Um, I did not explain this yet, but we can do that right now. She has 200 gold, we'll do that. But see her master, I have these things, so let's do it with somebody else. I'll, do, I'll explain that with, with somebody else different. I don't wanna, I, I don't wanna screw up my inventories and stuff, but let's go over here. So they got the cloth here and the alchemist. We can do it with the alchemist dude right here. Uh, right here, this is a pretty good alchemist because she has 3K gold and she has the ma Grand Master uh, Mortar and Pestle. She only has one, so it won't restock. But all these items that do restock, they add on and, so, and some of them will double some of them will just add on what they have for their stock so as you can see here i have 2500 void salts that she has to sell that doesn't happen naturally uh as part of the bug in this game so i can buy this 2500 here for this much money just make the offer and buy it i can come back here into my inventory 
and we have 2,500 of them. We'll sell them all back and just maximize my sale. Take all your gold while I'm at it. Why not? I'm here. And then we come back into here and we barter it up. And where is the number? Right there. It's 5,000. Now she has 5,000. So this is how it works for most of the items. They will double up. You buy them for whatever whatever, whatever reason you want to buy anything. You just buy it. And then you sell it. And they'll double it up. And then you buy it again and sell it. And they'll double it up. Uh, same with uh, potions will only go up one at a time. Or two at a time, depending on how much they have. If she has three and then she restocks them, they gotta have those two conditions. They gotta be restocked. If she has three and she restocks them, you can buy them and then sell them, and then she'll have six. You buy them, sell them, she'll have nine. For other ingredients like this, they double up and like for arrows, not for arrows, but arrows are, are singular singular too. If they have two hundred, if they only start with a hundred, they're only gonna get a hundred off the next time that you do it. But they will keep adding up. And some of them will do that and some of them don't. And they add up and they add up and then uh, you're good to go with a huge amount. So let's go to the cool guy. We wanted to get the Golden Saint Scrolls and another vendor. So right here, right to the left in the temple here is this guy right here. He is an enchanter and he has enchanting scrolls. And here is the Golden Saint spell right here. And he does restock it. So I can buy 165 and it says 6,000, but I'm going to be cheap and I'm going to buy it for 4,000 because I can. So I just bought... 165 of these scrolls i have 255 now i bought 165 so let's sell them 100 and how much 133 there you go 133 that's still more than what he still i still could go less you don't care about gold as soon as you can make a profit from a merchant by buying and selling the same item gold does not matter anymore it's just robbing these people of all their gold as as much as possible so you can do that with this golden saint scrolls and they keep doubling up uh when you do that so now he's at like almost 300 and that is how you get as much golden saint scrolls as you want and you could do it with all the rest of the scrolls here too that hey he actually restocks he restocks golden saint scrolls there's your most important summoning spell in the game. Basically, you now you have as, as much Golden Saints uh, scrolls as you want. Thank you very much. And I took your gold, so thank you for that too. And all right, there you have it. And you haven't done any cheating. You're just using the game's natural mechanics and ripping them off. So you ripped them off nicely. And there's another vendor right here. He's hiding in the corner. So he's like hiding in there. He's, he's a good vendor though, I believe. Get out of the way, dummy. He's a good vendor. Uh, he has a thousand gold. So a thousand is pretty good to rip him off with. And uh, you can use hammers. I used uh, I used the ninja stars. He's getting up 100, 1400 ninja stars. I never actually used those as a weapon. But yeah, now we go on to the trick of the uh, resting. So resting is going to, you're going to be in here doing most of your level up, your training and merchantile skills. Uh, each, each training session is two hours, if I didn't mention that. And merchants restock every 24 hours. So train 12 times or do what I did. I did it 20 times. I trained my 20 times I needed to maximize my levels. And then I went around and stole all the merchants gold around there using that. But you talk to her, you can get a bed. We welcome you. And you get a bet off her. You can barter off her too, which I was doing, taking her 350. Because, you know, at the start of the game, you think 350 is a lot. And you want to take all the money you can. But you get your bed. You need to rest. And there is, you know, I don't want to go across town to, to rest. And this is like one of the places you can go. You know, 10 gold doesn't matter to you anymore. But come in here and save it. Do a quick save before you rest and position yourself in a proper position because you're going to get attacked by uh, by uh, guys uh, randomly when you rest. When you try and rest, they're going to come there and they're going to attack you. And these guys are Dark Brotherhood and they can be they level up with you and then that means they can kill you. They can kill you pretty easy if they level up with you. They're going to be pretty tough. So you want to block off this area here so they can't spawn behind you. But you want to block off enough areas so they don't spawn right in front of you either. So you want to get a nice thing right here and you want to block the doorway. So that is the trick. Be in a position about right about here so you can block the doorway and block the spawning from touching you. You save it, of course, quick save it, and then you rest and then they'll attack. And hopefully they'll spawn right outside the door like they're supposed to. And then when they open the door, you're standing here and you're blocking it. So when they come in there, the door is going to be open, but you're going to be blocking it. And you can take out your weapon, and then you can start walking them. They they don't attack. They will run at the door. So then let's keep running at the door like the noobs they are. And they'll just, so if you have the noob assassin, they'll run at the door. And then you can just keep on whacking them with your regular weapon that you have until you kill them. And eventually they will they will die. And they'll start out with just one guy coming at a time. And the first guy that comes at you, he'll be pretty weak. He'll have just the basic Dark Brotherhood armor that I have right here. It won't be at 70 as my rated skill but it might be I think it's 60 to start off with I think it's base value it might be 60 or 50 I don't know this, this stuff goes up when you level up your uh, light armor skill 
But it's really good light armor. It's three times better than the Chichen armor. That's the most important part. The Chichen armor is the stuff that you buy at the start at the first vendor. And this this is three times better that you get from the easy kill. And he also drops these darts, but, you know, they're worth 2k. And it's not a bad nice thing, thing to sell. I just collected them. Uh, and eventually they level up. So how you get the Dedrick weapons is they level up. You want to get them in the mid-level range. Um for your levels i don't know exactly what level it is you will find out yourself as you rest and you kill the guys if you want to so don't don't just reload the game kill them kill kill those bodyguards because they will have dedrick weapons and that's how i got two of these weapons right here and i did not uh for, for i didn't find them i just kept on reloading and, and and avoiding the fights but i should have gone there because apparently dedrick weapons are really hard to get uh, not like the other ones, not like the other Merowins, or Elder Scrolls games. And these ones are harder, they're hard to get. They don't respawn and stuff like that. You have to get them off the off the guys. No easy way to buy them in crap or craft them. So yeah, so that's a good way to get these Dedrick weapons. A forty-eight thousand dollar, you know, Wakazakshi sword. Nice, 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 good sword there for a short blade. It's really pretty. It's really pretty handy. And then later on, I don't have the sword on me. I can show you that sword in a second. Uh, it'll be the next step. Well, I'll show you the next sword to get. After a while, they get higher level and they'll start dropping weapons that are uh, adamantium weapons, which is one of the expansions, or they could be just glass weapons for you if you don't have that little add-on thing. But uh, Open MW has that uh, as an option you can pick, and um, they will drop those, and they'll have they'll have a. Um, uh, they'll have the strike on command for paralyzing and poison. So, but they they take like 50 charges to use it uh, at the start of the game. So it takes like 50 charges, and it only has 90. So you can hit them once and paralyze them once, and then that's it. You have to recharge it or wait a long time to get it to go. But up here. This is the next place you want to go. Where are you going to store your stuff? You, you want to take their armor. You want to keep their armor for later on because you want, may want to do different enchantments. And I didn't do that. And I should have. Is keep all their armor and then all their weapons and farm extra Dedrick weapons for your heart's content. You come to this building right here. So up the staircase, the building right here, right near the alchemist right here. These, these doors will be locked. This one's a little bit harder to get into. But if you picked... Uh, security at the start and you did the trade with her to get master lockpicks it shouldn't be a problem just don't let the guard see you or you can come up here and jump across here and come in this way and unlock this door and it'll be easier door to unlock but you still have to you still want to unlock the front door anyways but you come in here there's a person to talk right here she tells you the master is dead uh, whoop do da day you can get a quest to find out who did it and then try and figure that out but here is his body right here his body is full of stuff um not full of stuff but his body is unlimited storage capacity and you can store whatever you want in there and it'll never disappear so this is your storage container and where's that weapon right there they do the jinx blade yeah to paralyze and poison for 10 seconds yeah 10 points of poison for 10 seconds that's probably what's causing the whole thing that's 100 damage so that's pretty that's pretty nifty for damage it's weaker than the dedrick blades for for damage for, and it's still a short blade, right? And it's, you know, adamantium. Yeah. But that's the, that's the weapons that they were they were dropping the last time. Now they don't spawn and try to kill me anymore. Maybe I killed too many of them. I don't know. And there's that healing ring right there. One one to five points. One second on self. And that's just basically my basic junk. I just threw on him. Because that is your storage container. Other storage containers, like all these ones here, will eventually, uh, will eventually, you know, just, uh, I might, they might not, or they might. It is always iffy. You never know what's going to happen during the expansion, but they will, the contents will just uh, randomly disappear and respawn, basically. So all your contents that you put in these things will, will despawn, but not in the body. Not, so that's the body is the safest place to put stuff. Or you can uh, even, people say you can even drop stuff. So you can just drop stuff anywhere you want, and it will just stay there, and nobody will take it, and you'll be good to go. So lots of people use the Mage's Guild, and that's the Fighter's Guild right there. And the best fighters guild trainer is right here. Well, That's this is this is the guy that has you know best chance. trainer because he has barter. And if you train with guys, you can barter with them after and take all their gold after. And as you can see, I was doing it with silver arrows. He's got 162k of arrows now. Just because they double up so much, I don't need that many to take all his gold like that. I can just I just make it simple. I buy them and then I go to myself. Like these manuals will be smaller for you. Then this, I sell it and then maximize my sale. And I took I took his money. There you go. All gone. Thank you. Repair. Okay, one gold. I can repair myself. Yeah, but just take it off. Take money off of them. It's as simple as that. Every every day. Thank you for your money. See you later. Let's go to the Mage, Mage's Guild. This is the most important place right here to travel around the world. And the trainer is up there to make magic items up the staircase. 
uh, around the corner a little bit. And then right here is your traveling guy. And right here is your enchantment trainer, dude. So make sure you come over here and get his money, too, while you're running around. He's got 800, and that's worthwhile taking at the start of the game, I guess. And he's got crappy potions only, so do that, or... Whatever, just, you know, take his money and do his training. We'll get into how to maximize your enchanting stuff after I show you how to get to them. So the uh, next thing we are going to do, uh, what do you need next? You have, you have money now, and you have all, of, you have some basic items, and all the scrolls that you need. You got the summon saints, now you need grand soul gems. So let's go get the grand soul gems and the spells to, uh, help it along. Uh, to get these other spells, you, you talk to all the guys, not that you have money is not a problem, talk to everybody and buy all their spells. Make it simple. If they have barter, even better. This guy doesn't have barter, so just take all their spells and then use the mage guild to travel to other mages guild, because they're going to have all the spells to sell. So do all the mages guild and leave Wolverine Hall until last. We want to leave it to last because... Um, just because. Well, you can, you can, don't, you can, just do whatever. Just after you're done going to all these places, go to the Mage's Guild Hall. Uh, preferably last or second. You, you can leave Vivix for uh, for last if you want. But go to here. Go to Wolverine Hall. This is the Mage's Guild right here. Just this whole room right here. Buy all their spells. Just because you need them all. Go outside. There's nothing really much. Else. Go down one level. One level into the temple. Into the shrine. So go into the shrine. Not this dude, but over to your left. This, this dude right here. This guy here has the spell Divine Intervention. And you're going to want that spell to help you for teleporting to temples. And like temples and stuff, they tell divine intervention teleports you to the closest temple. So this is what you want. You want to go this guy. After you bought the spell here, let's go outside. We want to go outside Wolverine Hall for one basic reason. Is to go, we want to go to the bar. So right down the staircase. And then well, over here, there's, no, there's nowhere else to really go. You're, you're blocked off. Just go across the bridge to the pub over here. We're going to go over here because in the new expansions there is another guy over here. And you'll have it. And upstairs is where he is. Upstairs. There he is right there. Here's the mage right there. Well, you want to buy spells off of this guy right here. So he has the spells to drain attributes. Well, not attributes. Drain skill. So drain skill and fortify skill are the new sk uh, spells that they added. Which can really uh, affect gameplay by a huge amount when you're trying to you know break stuff uh the drain skill no longer works with the open mw running it or it doesn't work for me at least uh, anymore but it used to be able to drain skills off all the, the trainers um on yourself you could drain skill like yourself so for illusion for example i could drain my illusion skill by 100 points for a couple seconds talk to him and train my skill but and it doesn't work anymore i tried it it doesn't work for me, you gotta use the fortify one. So, but the drain skill is an important spell to get, and he's not too far away. Once you have it, you're gonna re use your recall. Uh, of course, you should have marked that. All right, where is it? What's it? Oh, six, six, no, seven. There it is, recall. After you have that done, let's go back. Do your mark and recall. You're gonna get that here and put place them right here by the traveler, because that is in Balmora. That's the best place because it's still it's right here, right outside. Now that you have that, you have Divine Intervention, you're going to want to go to the Vivic Mages Guild right here, and then you're going to want to cast Divine Intervention, and I put that in our nine, and to do assign these skills, by the way, is hit F1. F1 will show you the short, the quick keys menu, and then you can click a key and then pick whatever you want. That's how you assign your quick keys. They don't really tell you how to do that. They, they kind of skip that over, but let's not skip it over. That's how you do it. F1 to sign your keys, but now we have Recall. We are going to recall, and that brings you to the temple, which is the uh, right over here on the map. Uh, you got to go here and click on here. There we go. So yeah, here's the, here's the map. This is where your starting town is. There is Balmora, and this is Vivek, the whole area. Big, huge. You don't want to walk around in here. It just takes too long. It's a big, huge area. That's why we go over here to the Ebonheart uh, Castle. I guess that's what it's called. There's a boat over here, too. If That doesn't matter, though. But right over here to the Ebonheart Castle. And then once you're in Ebonheart, uh, you don't go to this door right here. Uh, yeah, you can go in here if you want. You can go in here and learn all, all the spells off the guys. Since you're here, why not? Uh, learn the spells off the guys, but you can come over here. And you come to the Ground Council Chamber. And now you want to get teleported. You go to your left and talk to her. You want to talk to her. And, and Cynthia Rain. Whatever, Mrs. Rain here. She's going to have an option to transport to Mornhold, but you don't have that right away. That's where you want to go. You want to go to Mornhold, but you can't travel there right away. And that's one of the new areas. So what you do when you come in here, first thing you do is just go straight ahead. Go straight ahead and it says go to Ebonheart. 
cross the bridge out here, out here. There is probably another way to do it, but this was my way to do it and pretty easy. You gotta talk to this dude right here. Get over here, whatever, you, whoever you are. Uh, whatever, here you go. Martinez. You're going to talk about everything you're going to need. You're going to want to talk about, to unlock that thing, you're going to want to talk about the Dark Brotherhood, and then you're going to want to talk about the mainland, and then you're going to want to talk about transport to Mornholt. And once you talk to transport to Mornholt, you get a quest journal update or anything here to with her. That's, that's her name right there. You want to talk to her, and make sure you click on all of his stuff right there, and that's it. That's what you got to do. you got to talk to somebody like him that will unlock talking to her. And give her the option so now you can just go back to where you came from and talk to her again and the option will still not be up here it will it will be down here somewhere and then you'll have like transport their hair or you might have to go and do some other talking but eventually you'll get this option right here to transport and it'll say yes please so we want to go to mornhold mornhold is the place to be and this is another huge huge area we're not even here we're not even on the map anymore we're another huge area that's not on the map we're gonna leave it. Yeah, yeah. So he doesn't even show it on the map. We have to go level local. Yeah, local world works. World doesn't. It's one of the new expansion areas, and that's how sloppy they are at this game. So, come in here. Just turn around. Go to the royal palace courtyard, and come outside here. Hang a right and go straight. So, first thing you want to do is want to go straight over here and come over here to the imperial cult services. And there she is, right there. You're gonna to want to talk to her. You talk to her, she sells spells. She sells fortify skill spells. That is like the easiest way to get fortify skill spells ever, and they are the most powerful. So what you do with the fortify skill spells is, I uh, don't have any, so let's make some. Um, so you go to here, you make a spell, uh, put a zero dash uh, uh, fort uh, enchanting. This is one you, you might want to do yourself. You want to do fortify enchanting, you just learned how to do fortify skill and where is it fortify skill there it is right there enchant and untouch yep leave it untouch and we want to put it up to whatever the guy already has the guy already has a whole bunch so you can just modify this to whatever you want 66 good enough doesn't matter as long as you put him up above to a, up to his 100 mark that's good enough fortify skill enchant 66 points do whatever who cares uh, you can do 50 if you want it depends on, you can do 100 doesn't matter it only goes up to 100 anyway so once you have that spell done you can just go over here and cast Fortify Enchantment and cast it on a trainer that actually has enchantment to train. Uh, do you train? Well, you got spells. I didn't, no, yeah, you're just services only. But you're not services only, but find somebody who has a training skill, Fortify tra uh, uh, Enchant, like the uh, guy I told you in, in uh, Balmora, a major skill, like him. And you do it off of him. Or anybody else. And you can do this with any skill and any trainer. Any trainer that has a skill, you can just fortify it and train it to 100. Plain and simple. But that is the side reason why we're here. That is how you get the fortify skill spell. Now we want to get to the... Uh, so this is where we start right here. And now we want to get to the other guy, which is across the way here. So just always across the way. Get out of my way, guys. Jesus. Across the way, we want to get to the plaza first. And this is where we're going to buy the Grand Soul Gems as much as we want. So we'll go to the plaza. And we're going to hang a right. And we're going to go to the... Uh, not, we're going to go to the uh, God's Reach. So you go to God's Reach in here. And just keep going straight. So just go straight until you find the first right right here. So right in here. Just right up this staircase here, and here it is right there, the Craftsman's Hall. And you can check the local map, but it's only handy if you run around here a lot, which I haven't done. Oops. So yeah, Craftsman Hall. In the Craftsman Hall, we are going to go upstairs on the left here. Sorry, I don't know why it's so dark all the time. Gonna come over here to the left and then to the right. Yeah, here, there you are. So you find this guy right here. Albert near earmark. Find this goofy looking guy right here with the wearing a dress and looks like he has breasts. Kind of weird. But anyways, we're gonna go talk to him and we're gonna barter off of him. He has the grand soul gems. He has a whole bunch of other stuff I didn't even really explore. I didn't care because I just wanted the grand soul gems. I stole the landware platter, I stole off the other thing there. But yeah, you got some other neat things there. Grand Soul Gems, this is where you buy them. And of course, he's got 6,000 gold, so he's pretty good if you want to waste your time and do stuff. Um, I don't know how to get out of here fast, other than, you know, recall back. But uh, yeah, but 6,000 gold is not bad. You can steal that off of him right now. But yeah, you just buy, I can buy 214 off of you, and for whatever amount. 
It doesn't matter. Who cares? Buy 214. Barter. Go over here to my character and click on 216. Okay. And then we'll sell you back. How about 122? Is that enough for you? No, nope, that's not going to be enough for you. How about, how about you take back 27 more? Oops, I got to go the other way. I'm going backwards. That's what it is. Grand Soul Jam is right there. No. Nope. God, these big menus are screwing me up. I already got them there. Okay. Anyways, max sale. Screw it. Yeah, he doesn't like it. So let's click on here and... Uh, nope. Let's click on cancel. Click on here. Okay, let's just cancel out of here. I screwed up too many times. Barter. Myself. Wrong one. I can't see it. There you go. 160. That's good enough. There you go. 160 back. Carry this on. Max sale. Give me that. There you go. There you go. I bought him. Now I just took 160. Now he's got 300 somewhere. Yeah, this is just a buggy system. Took his gold. And uh, there is a bug with this guy that your your soul gems might be uh, classified as stolen, even though you bought them. Uh, but that is how you get the grand soul gems and get, get as many, many as you want. So now that is set up and done. And uh, you can explore to your heart's content or do whatever. But I am going to go back to Belmora and I keep hitting F buttons when I shouldn't do that at all. Uh, go back to no, recall. Now let's go back to the Mage's Guild here. So that is how you get all of the best items. Um, there you go. Merry Christmas. There's only one more thing to get is the Golden Saint Summon spell itself. So let's do let's do that. Uh, I think that covers everything else, right? You do have to know how to fortify skills now. You got the spell, fortify skill. Um, the summon safe spell, if you wanted to know, does not work anymore for bugging the spells out. And what I mean by that is when you create your spell, you can create a spell with uh, summon... Uh, uh, summon Golden Saint for one second and then uh, uh, um, Soul Trap for like one second on um, two. So you put the Summon Saint, any Summon spell for one second in a Soul Trap or any other type of spell that does an, an effect on target uh, and for one second. That's like a, that's supposed to be a buff. This was the old way to make permanent guys so you can make permanent summon guys to kill. And it was really easy to collect you know, glass weapons and stuff like that from the Golden Saints and shields. But it doesn't work anymore. Uh, probably because they fixed it in Open MW, or it's just something that I couldn't get to work. Even though they did it so easily just by pointing at the ground and casting the summon spell. Blah blah blah, it doesn't work. But let's go find the Golden Saint spells and the summon, you know, Dedra spell that we want to find. So go to the Stilts Rider. This is the easiest way to do it. Travel, get a Stilts Rider and go to the Vic. This is this place I go. The Vic, and then you have the boat. So you want to get on the boat. This is one of the new areas that you want to go to. And get on this boat. Can I at least, yeah, I can pick up those. Okay. Get onto the boat right here. Not very far. We are going to travel to Tell Bernora. That is the place to go. And you're gonna you should have the levitate spell by now. All those vendors it's that you talk to, Mage's Guild that you candy strike to all the Mage's Guild to get their spells, you should have levitate. So just leave this little leave the dock and go to the main building, which is right there. There's nothing no, there's nowhere else to really go in this area, so you won't get lost. Hey. I wonder if I can kill those guys or they want to fight or something. I don't know. But yeah, come over here to tell Benor. It's one of those big tree things. Guys, right here, we're going to go upstairs. So just follow the pathway on the left, up the stairs, up the stairs, all the way to the top. As you can, you got to jump to get up here. Stupid thing. But yeah, up here. Get to the top level. Don't fall off. And go to the upper level of the tower. You come to the upper level, and then the easiest way I found is just go straight. Go straight, follow the pathway, up a little bit, up, 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 and around the corner. We're in this room right here, and we're going to hang a right. And these things, they, they, they say both, right? Upper uh, Thalvin's Chamber, and this one on the left says Thalvin's Chamber. So they both say the same thing, and they probably Three both go to the same area. But yeah, so we come here, and you are stuck. You can't go anywhere. We have to levitate, and levitate is not on my quick spell menu, so I gotta go find it. Uh, levitate. And it's expensive to cast. Where is it? There you are. Levitate. And just move. You don't have to jump or anything. Just move up here. And there he is right there. So, yeah, that's probably another hole right there. Can I 
and the other guy over there. But you talk to this guy right here, Fel Marion, and he has spells. And he has all the summon spells right there that you can buy. And you can make spells off of them. But he has the Golden Saint spell. And the spells don't re recharge after it. But he has summon he has summoned Demora and Dedrith. You know, Demora is the uh, uh, guys that if you wanted to make them permanent, they're pretty good because they'll have the Dedrick weapons, but it doesn't work right now for my game or anymore. And then uh, down here, there's Golden Saint. So you can make your Golden Saint spell like that. And then you're supposed to be able to have like your Soul Trap spell on target like that. And this is supposed to work. Like well, I can show you. D. I can buy it. That is supposed to work to make the spell permanent, but there you are. It doesn't work. You look down. You're supposed to look down and then cast it, right? And it's supposed to bug out and make the spell permanent. But no matter what I do, it's not working anymore. So I still got levitate. It doesn't work anymore. Unfortunately, that'd be cool. Levitate is so slow. Can't jump. There it go. It ran out. So we'll go outside. Go outside somewhere. Just disappears. Yeah, you can see it right. So it's just one second, and they disappear. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't work anymore. Probably open out. Open the MW. Fixed a lot of these uh, bu these uh, bugs and the other exploits that crashed the game. Because doing this will really crash the game too. It can be really bad for your game if it actually works, and can have lots of issues. Because you can do this with uh, fortify spells too. So you can fortify your skills, fortify your attributes, and uh, have them work permanently if you cast them down like this. That was what the old bug was, and yeah, that can really screw your game up. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't work anymore. So let's go back and cover the last thing that I was not doing. If you wish to talk. Jesus fucking Christ, that kid. Anyways, let's cover the last thing that we need to do. And that is another exploit we can do with potions so that I'm not doing. Uh, right now, but I need to cover it so you know if you want to make the most powerful enchantments in the game and powerful spells and powerful potions. This is where you do it. You can come in here and you uh, oh, buy the ingredients that have a fortify intelligence or fortify intelligence or fortify uh, attribute, whatever. Uh, basically, you want fortify intelligence, I think it is. So, so find something that has fortify intelligence or find another vendor anywhere that has fortify intelligence as a um, menu item here to pick your potion you get fortify attribute fortify attribute intelligence fortify no, that's restore uh fortify fatigue uh you might have to look it up on the on the, on the web uh, web pages for the ingredients because i can only see uh, uh three of the four ingredients right now but uh, yeah the basic concept is find something that get, that has fortify intelligence there's endurance uh fortify intelligence there's one right there bloat so fortify intelligence on bloat and then find some more and if this vendor doesn't have both uh, there she is ashiam fortify intelligence i wonder if she doubles that up let's find out ashiam buy uh ashiam where are you sell Ashiam and sell it and then buy Ash. No, she doesn't restock Ash yams. But just find somebody. Like in that teleporter place, that's, that's Ash territory, I believe. Somebody there will do it. Just find vendors that sell any ingredients that do have fortify intelligence. Make potions that fortify intelligence. You can buy all the potions that off of her. You just click on the stuff like that. And then all of them will um, appear in here. And then you just pick your ingredients. Or you can just, you know, change this to effect. Oh, this right there. To magic effects. And then sortify magic effects and then pick intelligence with all your ingredients that you have and then make a potion that fortifies intelligence once you make an a potion that tell that fortifies intelligence uh drink it and then after you drink it uh go back in there and make another one and then the new potion that will be higher level and then you just uh, drink that and then you uh, make another one that's going to be higher level than that one and then you do repeat this process until your intelligence is so damn high like 10,000 or something like that and then you just mass produce a whole bunch of uh, potions that are giving you a fortify intellect of like 1,000 points or something like crazy like that so when you drink the potions they're going to last for a long time you're going to fortify your intelligence by like a thousand points or something like that and then you create your all the other potions that you want so whatever you want to do with it like you know you can do fortify magic magic regen hit point regen everything like that go crazy with your alchemy sets and uh, make as 
crazy potions that you want. Then you can use it to make spells and magic items too. And just, you know, you make spells that uh, can fortify your intellect and, and stuff like that. And fortify your uh, magic, fortify your magic and all that kind of stuff. And then have potions to get your magic points regen up nice and, ha nice and high too. And then cast big, these huge uh, spells that you can create with your stuff and magic items. You know, the possibilities are endless. You're just going to be nerfing the whole game to crap. Not nerfing it, but just over exploiting the game. You're going to be way too powerful. Nothing's going to be able to hurt you at all. If you have these like kind of spells and make these enchantments and enchanted gear that are super powerful, now that you have as as many um, golden soul gems as you grand soul gems as you want and golden saint spells, you can just cast. You can just sit there and kill the golden saints and get them and soul gem them right away. Make make a weapon that has you know soul trap on it and some damage. Summon the golden saint scroll off the scroll, kill it, collect the gem, make some more. Just rinse and repeat as much as you want. Um, for starter gear, I only did uh, basic, you know, I did basic health regen and basic, uh, 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 what is it, where is it, uh, stamina regen, uh, wait, what do they call it, restore health, doo -doo -doo -doo. fatigue, they call it fatigue, yeah, okay, restore fatigue, so you can restore fatigue and restore health, permanent effects, good, good, nice and handy, uh, water walking, water breathing, and uh, fortify strength. Is the other things, and then I took you know chameleon on the items that I can't even do and fortify strength. You just need five points to do it, but they don't have five points. But yeah, just fortify strength to get so you increase your carry weight, increase your damage with the fortify strength and your carry weight, so you can kill carry more of those uh, big soul gems and kill the golden saints a little bit uh, a little bit faster. Just for basic starter gear, and then you're good to go. So that is it. That covers everything to get started in this game. So now you can actually start playing it. Like I'm going to start playing it next. And this is the first part of my recap of getting started in Merowind. And the next episode is going to be just playing in the actual game. And the last tip I can remember is to be master of the Thieves Guild and the Fighters Guild. Because uh, they are mutually exclusive. You can be master of both. Uh, you can only be a master of one house. You can only join one house, uh, uh, legally at least. Uh, so just join one house and whatever house you feel like it. You get a free house of that. It doesn't matter. Um, but uh, for Mage Guild and Fighters Guild, start off with the Fighters Guild. He's right there. Do the quest in the Fighters Guild and try and do them out of town. So after you do the first basic parts, go to some of the other towns and do those Fighters Guild quests. And don't side with the leader here. So this guy's the leader of the Fighters Guild is here. Don't side with him. Side with the other guy. You don't like you don't like this guy. Side with the other guy, and then when you get the quest to steal the uh, scroll or book or whatever, I think it's a scroll. Steal the scroll off the mage guild, off the thief guild guy in there. So you gotta steal the scroll or get a scroll some way. He just just talk to him. You have your persuasion of him. Just talk to him. He'll give it to you. And after he gives it to you, then join the thief guild, and you can sit on it. For there, just you join the Thieves Guild after you got that scroll, and then you won't have any conflicts of interest uh, for joining the Thieves Guild and the Fighters Guild anymore. The last thing you got to do is uh, do all the rest of the Fighters Guild or the Thieves Guild in any order that you feel like it. I believe it doesn't matter at that point, but do all the quests uh, since you sided with the other guy in the other town. Uh, the last quest you're going to get for the Fighters Guild is to kill the Fighters Guild leader. Don't kill him yet until you are the uh, Thieves Guild gives you the quest to kill the Fighters Guild leader. That is one reason why they're mutually, mutually exclusive because um, if you are in the uh, Fighters Guild, you have to do something bad to get an item off of them. And if you're in the Thieves Guild, you have to kill the Fighters Guild leader. And that's pretty bad to try and be, uh, be in, in the Fighters Guild while you kill the leader. But you get a quest to kill the Fighters Guild leader if you're in the Fighters Guild and that's your last quest and you decided with the other guy. Makes it really simple. So that is the last thing I really read up on is that, is how to be master of both of those guilds. And then the Mage Guild is just... Do the Mage Guild stuff, and then Mage on Tong Guild, or whatever you want to call it, Assassin's Guild over there, you can join that one up, and rank up in that one. So that is it, that's the last little bit right there, if you want to actually watch gameplay and these quests go by, and uh, how the game works out when you're leveled up like this, that's what I'm going to be doing next. So thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. And I will just be this playing this game and actually doing playing the game, you know, how you're supposed to play the game. After you've uh, all, of course, leveled up and, you know, got as much gold as you want where it, where it becomes no object. And I can level up all these skills as much as I want. I could skill up everything if I really wanted to. 
I just don't see the val the point into it right now. I got the uh, things that were important to level up was just basically the enchant skill. That is basically it. It's, it you know, speech craft and the other ones just leveled up naturally. But yeah, but that's how you uh, do all the little bugs and take advantage of everything in this game uh, to start with. So this is just the basic starting guide. Uh, this doesn't include everything else like getting all the best weapons and items and stuff like that. This is just to get you started. So hopefully this helped and uh, I probably won't do a video on all the things that are involved in this game to maximize everything. Like finding all the gear with spell absorption and all the places to go to do that kind of stuff. This game is pretty huge and that would be a lot of stuff to do. And it's already been done a lot of times but uh, I think people just needed an updated version of getting started with this game. On the things that do work and that don't work and how to get them with all, with the, with the two, two new expansions that were added. Uh, whatever, how many years ago they were added. That come standard with the game now with the fortify skill chant and drain skill uh, spells type deal. And of course the skull, Saint Scrolls, I don't, I don't think they were there before. And just all the features of going to those other areas which weren't there before and how to do that. So I think I covered the basics. You got the basic ideas on how to get around in this game. In this game, you have all the information you need to get started and make a character overpowered and uh, get yourself as much money as you want. So that was my goal. So thanks for watching and I'm going to go and actually play this game now. So I'll see you later.